they heard a bell begin to ring. It was the clock at the central staircase. Three in the morning. That means we have three hours left. Then we need to move now. Seven, Clover, Junpei. I know how you feel, but do you understand? You do understand that right now, it's important we trust one another, don't you? Junpei couldn't bring himself to respond. He swallowed the words he wanted to say, and sighed. Seven and Clover remained similarly silent. Their eyes were looking at something somewhere else, very far away. We must go! We have very little time left. Ace's words put their feet to moving. They all knew where they were going. Their next destination was Mercury. It sat, bolted to the wall near the stairs that led to the casino and the kitchen between the two elevators. The Mercury Card Reader. Junpei stood in front of it with the Mercury Key Card. Seven had given him the card. I found it when we were checking out the shower room. At least, that's what he'd said. Junpei slid the card through the reader. The light on the reader turned green and made a tiny electronic noise. Now, they were ready. Junpei and Jun had been chosen as the investigators. The reasoning behind that, they had been to Edek before, and no one else had. As before, Junpei sent the elevator ahead to make sure the floor they were heading to wasn't flooded. As before, the elevator returned as dry as when it had left. Once it had been checked for water, Junpei and June stepped into the elevator. There were only two floor buttons they could push, the C and bottom buttons. The rest were destroyed or did nothing when pushed. Junpei hit the bottom button. The door closed. Slowly they began to move downward. Sometime later, Junpei and Jun stepped off the elevator and onto the bottom deck. They stepped off and saw that the hallway to their right ended somewhere between 20 and 25 feet from them. The hallway in front of them was a dead end, but not a regular dead end. This is a numbered door. This is the eighth one we found. There were two numbered doors on B deck, near the central staircase. They were doors four and five. There were three more numbered doors in the large hospital room. Doors 3, 7, and 8. Junpei had June had found another door on E deck, and Lotus and Santa had found the seventh on A deck. There was a six door on E deck, and a one on the door on A deck. 4, 5, 3, 7, 8, 6, 1. And now, door 2 stood in front of Junpei. There was only one thing it meant. Do you think the next door we find? Yeah, I think so. The next one's gonna be door nine. Despite himself, Junpei felt excited. There was something about that excitement that frightened him as well. He did his best to put it up from his mind and headed back to Sea Deck with June. All right, let's open these up. The pieces of paper they folded up lay on the ground next to Junpei's legs. There were seven of them, all told. They were written on paper pulled from Junpei's notebook, and each one bore a code name and a door. Why had they decided to vote that way? They decided it wasn't fair to simply ask everyone at once. That would allow other people to force others to go through certain doors. Well, that wasn't the only reason. Junpei had proposed the voting system, and he had a plan. It wasn't a plan he wanted anyone catching wind of, however, so he did his best to act calm as he began to open and read the pieces of paper. The first one read, Ace requests door one. Yes, I do. Would you like me to explain why? No, we don't have time for that, sorry. Well, let's keep going. He opened the second one. Next is Santa. He wants door six. Yeah, that's what I wrote. Junpei continued with the third, fourth, and fifth pieces of paper. Clover wants one, Lotus wants two, and Seven also wants two. Eh? W wait a minute! 
There's no way I'm going anywhere with the Elephant Man! No. There'd be no point to voting if we let people change their choices because of stuff like that. But... Just give it up, Lotus. It's not like I want to hang out with some exhibitionist grandma. I'm not an exhibitionist. I'm wearing clothes. Barely. So? Last I checked, that's not a crime. Maybe. But what about common decency? Nobody wants to have to look at a chick who looks like a half-naked raisin. I'm gonna kill you! Lotus's hair flared out like the mane of an angry lion, and she roared with a voice that shook the walls. With some difficulty, Ace managed to restrain her. Junpei, read the rest! Ugh, right. Junpei tore his eyes away and looked down at the sixth piece of paper. He opened it. June wants door six. Yes. I don't really have a reason. I just felt like it. All the papers, save Junpei's, had been read. He did some quick calculations in his head. People who requested door one, Ace and Clover. This was the door on A deck near the central staircase. People who requested door two, Seven and Lotus. This was the door on the bottom deck. That could be reached by taking the elevator to the bottom of the ship. People who requested door six, Santa and June. This was the door on E deck and could be reached by taking the elevator near the central staircase down. It took him less than a second to run the numbers. He opened the seventh piece of paper and spoke. Okay, the last one is mine. I want to go through... Door six. Junpei flipped up on the piece of paper. It read, Junpei, door six. Of course it did. He'd written it, after all. That's a problem. June spoke barely above a whisker. Whisper. But they all knew what she'd said. None of these teens will be able to go through these doors. Clover and I chose door one. Lotus and I chose door two. That's not enough people to open a numbered door, however. The digital roots don't match up either. We've got similar problems. June, Junpei, and I want to go through door six, but our digital route is five. If we're going to open that door, we need a one. Damn. What are we going to do now? What are we going to do? Junpei crossed his arms and did his best to put his thoughts in order. The others followed suit, but with little result. Eventually, Clover broke the silence. Why don't Seven and Lotus go through door one with me? Her face was cold and flat, as was her voice, but her logic was sound. Seven and Lotus looked at each other. Seven plus eight plus four is nineteen. Nineteen adds up to ten, which adds up to one. The first problem resolved, Ace spoke up. What about me? Isn't that obvious? Wasn't one of the teams just complaining that they didn't have a one? You mean, I should join Santa's team? Clover nodded, her face still cold and emotionless. Her attitude and posture could not have been more different than the energetic girl of only a few hours earlier. No one seemed ready to contradict her. Her response was understandable, given the horrible situation in which she had found herself. But even so... I understand. I will go through door six, then. If we do as Clover has suggested, we can all pass through a numbered door. No one will be left behind. This seems to be the most reasonable solution. Seven? Lotus? What do you guys think? I don't have a problem with it. Me either. Alright then, we're good to go. At last, Junpei and the other six had managed to separate themselves into two teams. Clover, Seven, and Lotus headed to A deck, where the one door was, near the main staircase. Junpei, Jun, Ace, and Santa, however, took the elevator to E deck. The ride to E-Deck was a silent one. Alright, let's go. Santa's words jolted them into action, and they stepped out of the elevator into a long, straight hallway. Before long, they arrived in front of a door with a six. One by one, they put their palms over the red. With a soft electronic noise, it authenticated each of them. The door opened. 
and all at once the four of them leapt through it. Fortunately, the dead was located easily enough. This one had been placed quite close to the door they'd entered through. They gathered around it quickly and hurriedly placed their palms on it for authentication, one by one. It stopped. Yes, it stopped. The countdown had ceased, but Junpei's heart was still pounding in his chest like a frantic, thunderous drum. It felt as though it might shake itself up and out of his throat. He'd been through the doors three times before, but repetition had not dulled the experience. He was not anxious to find it dulled, however. He hoped to be free of the ridiculous game long before that happened. All right, let's go. With that attempt at good humor, Junpei took a deep breath and began to walk. He jogged down the stairs at the end of the hallway and found himself staring at a large door. It was a heavy thing, made of iron, and more than a little threatening. He took hold of the bar that served as his doorknob and shoved it down. The room beyond stopped him in his tracks. It was gargantuan, and made entirely of metal. None of the accents of wood or tile he'd seen in the rest of the ship. This room was purely functional, but utterly tremendous. Wow, what the hell is this? Santa got out a few words before Awe stole the rest of them. The rest were too stunned to offer anything more than gasps. It was easily the largest room they'd seen, and yet it was somehow closed and oppressive. The ceiling was at least two stories high, if not significantly more. It was easily several hundred feet across, and appeared to stretch the entire width of the ship. In the center of that gargantuan room stood a massive, rounded building. Even from a distance, the sheer bulk of it was... oppressive. Junpei could feel the room, the building, even the air, pressing down on him. Junpei and the others were standing on scaffolding that crisscrossed the whole area. The proper term was catwalk, Junpei thought, although that didn't seem particularly important. Alright, let's head downstairs. Nearby was a long iron staircase that made its way, eventually, to the floor beneath them. They moved toward the opposite side of the massive building, following the catwalk. They had said much as they'd walked, but as they approached the building, Ace suddenly spoke up. This looks to be the steam engine room. The steam engine room? Yes. The thing that looks like a cross-section of a mushroom is the boiler. Do you see the three round doors near the bottom? Coal was put into those and burned, which heats the water, producing steam. The same thing that drives a steam engine. This one is simply somewhat larger. I see. Even if Ace was right, the boiler was boiling nothing as they approached it. The entire room was silent as the grave. Suddenly, Junpei heard a noise behind him. He turned, just in time to see June collapse to her knees. Hey, what's wrong? Are you alright? He dashed toward her and wrapped his arm around her shoulders to steady her. It was then that he noticed... You... You're really warm. Is your fever coming back? Yes. Yes, it, it probably is. But I'm fine. Please, don't worry about me. I just need to rest and I'll be fine. Her voice was weak and forced, and it said a great deal more than her words did. Junpei carried her to the nearest wall and propped her up against it. She let her head fall back against the wall, as if she no longer had the strength to support it, and drew a ragged breath. Her eyes were empty, as if she was having a terrible trouble focusing them, and speaking, even speaking seemed difficult for her. Junpei felt his hand ball itself into a fist and clench tight, his knuckles whitening. He had to find a way out, and quickly. He turned and looked at Ace and Santa in turn. They might not have shared the depth of his emotion, but they certainly shared his concern. He didn't need the words to express the urgency of their situation. Alright, let's get started. Hang in there, June. I'm gonna get you out of here real soon. She managed a small nod before leaning back to rest her head on the wall. Seek!
Take a way out. Howdy, folks. Oh, my God. We're back on 999. Oh, I was waiting for there to be a moment for me to talk to you guys. All right, let's put a little mouse in over here. Oh, shoot. I don't know if I'm showing the mouse cursor in the video. Oh, I turned that off on purpose, and now I think I should turn it back on. I don't know if I'll be able to change the setting. Hopefully, you can see the mouse now. All right, so we're in the steam engine room. Man, it has been a while. I, uh, I was real busy. I actually moved across the country in the last few months. I think the last episode of this went up in April. It's, oh my god, was it really April? It's already October, holy shit. All right, there's a pair of wooden boxes here. There's nothing in them. Look, Ace, it's some kind of snowman secret meeting. Those are just bags full of sand. You use them as counterweight when you're lifting something up a pulley system. Man, you're too serious. <laughs> a snowman secret meeting. I like it. So there's a, like a pulley thing over there. A big wheel. A golden gear. It doesn't look like it was always golden like this. Well then, I imagine it was prepared especially for this game. It looks like there's a door over here in this tunnel. The belt over there must deliver the coal, which is then picked up and thrown into this door. The door appears to be welded shut, however. Well, we're not going that way. How about the next one down? This one's bronze? A huge bronze gear. This has to be important. Hmm. Is there a third one down here? Silver. It's a silver gear. Do you think it's made of pure silver? No way. Silver is way too soft to use for a gear. It's gotta be steel or iron gear that's been coated with silver. Ugh. Should have called it a silver gear then. Shouldn't have got your hopes up. Were you thinking you'd haul this thing back? Nah, but I think Seven could probably carry it, don't you? <laughs> wow. So, gold, bronze, and silver gears. There are a bunch of wooden boxes over here by the wall. I already looked through those, there's nothing there. I was actually aiming for these stairs. Can I go up? Yeah, oh, okay. Look at this. Hmm. This slider is down. Looks like Santa wants to give this one a shot. Ugh, damn it! Nothing. This thing won't budge. Maybe we have to start with this one? The three stars on the left are down, but this one is up. There are a number of lines engraved in these. I suspect we are meant to do something rather specific with them. Shanpei, why don't you put that slider down? Well, there's no harm in trying, I suppose. Nothing. Hmm. Nothing happened. Maybe it needs to be prepared somehow. You're saying that if we did something somewhere else, it'd respond somehow? Yes, I suppose that's one way of putting it. Hmm. Alright, we gotta we gotta prime that shit. We'll see a green lever. Pump it three times to prime the power. Hey, Jump Pei, where are you going? The only thing in there is a closed numbered door. Kinda pointless to go back, huh? Yeah, it sure is. What about this? Door A? There's another door over there. There's another door here, too. Yeah. It looks like it would be really hard to get there by walking on the scaffolding. I mean, it's not impossible, but it'd be pretty risky. I think maybe we ought to look for a safer route first. Alright, I guess we only have one option here. One of the doors on the furnace. There's an A on it. There's a circular wheel in the center of the door. Alright, let's get that sucker a twist. Well, it's noisy, but it opens. And it's totally pitch black in there. We should, um, go in here. Alright. Let's go. This looks just like the door we went into. Uh, where are we? We must be on the other side, yes? Which would put us directly above the conveyor belt. At any rate, we should keep moving. There's a great deal we've yet to investigate. Hmm. So now we're above the conveyor belt for coal. Oh, there's a C door. Okay. The other side of the C door. There's a B door. So the one we couldn't get to before was C. There's also B. Let's try B. So go through B. Now we're on the other side of the room again. Aha! Uh -huh. The catwalk. Yes, I, I want to go over here. What's down here? Oh, no, I want to look down. Can I look down? 
That's a hand-operated winch. It's a simple machine used to lift things up and down. You simply turn the wheel to pull up the rope. Jumpei, why don't you turn the wheel? The wheel? Yeah, that'd be this one, Jumpei. Alright, let's give this wheel a spin. What? That's weird. I don't feel any resistance. Ah, oh shit. <laughs> well done, Jumpei. You broke it. Good job, genius! You broke it! I didn't break it! It broke all by itself! Hmm. Well, we have a wheel now. I guess we can't go anywhere else but back through here. Let's try C now. Back across the room. Oh, look at this! There's a wooden box hanging beneath the catwalk. Hey, well look what we got here. A hand-operated winch. Um, there's no wheel to turn. Oh yeah, I've got the wheel I pulled off the other winch. Let's see if it fits. Sweet, it's a perfect fit. Like they were made for each other. Not shaky at all. Good, I should be able to turn this. Good work, Junpei. We should be able to haul up the wooden box. You see? The wooden box. It's under the catwalk. Can you see it? It's hanging from the rope on the winch, isn't it? It looks like there's some sort of device in it. I'm not sure what it is. At any rate, we might as well turn that wheel now. I'm counting on you. Okay, Dad, take it easy. Alright, I'll turn the wheel. Uh, what's this? What happened? This wheel only turns to the left. It only turns... It only turns to the left? That means we can't reel up that rope. Yeah. We can only let, only let the rope down. Interesting. I don't think that will be a problem. We will simply need to go downstairs after letting the wooden box down. I'll be counting on you, Junpei. Sure thing, no sweat. And so we lower it. I believe the box has reached the floor. Whoop. Yeah. He stuck his head out over the side of the catwalk and looked down. The box that had only recently hung just below the catwalk now sat on the floor. It had come to rest near the end of the tunnel that covered the conveyor belt, near where June had collapsed. Junpei could see her, still leaning against the wall, as if she barely had the strength to sit up. Even from so far away, it was not difficult to see that she had not improved. He almost thought he could see heat rising from her body. She doesn't seem to be improving. Ace's expression was inscrutable, but he'd said what they'd all been thinking. Well, of course not. She's not gonna just get better right away, you know? It'll take time. He tried desperately to convince himself of what he'd said. What could be causing this, I wonder? Illness, perhaps? Nah, it's gotta be exhaustion. Sana's response was confident and certain. She gets dropped into some weird-ass ship, forced to play some messed-up game. You think about it, it's a lot weirder that we aren't all freaking out just like her, you know? So you're saying we're abnormal? Yeah. We're just running around this room, solving all these puzzles, like it's business as usual. How the hell could you call that normal? We're just guinea pigs. Santa snorted in disgust. A guinea pig? You mean like a lab rat? You mean we're all being used for some kind of experiment? Is that what you're saying? Dunno. But, it doesn't like a possibility, you know? They stood there for a few more minutes, no one speaking, until Santa turned and walked away from the winch. Junpei and Ace followed him. I think we should follow him. Back down to the ground floor, through C, back through A, and then down the stairs. So where did that box come down? There we go. There's a pair of boxes here. Is this the one? Um, must be... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeesh, the... There are a number of these little windows along the inside of this thing. I think you're supposed to put coal in through these, but... They're welded shut. I don't think we can get these open. Can we go this way? Okay, it's the other side of that. Um, how do I get around to the other... Oh my. I'm <laughs> losing it here. Is this the box we lowered? Ah, a control panel for something. A little plug on the back. Okay. What is this? Well, what do you know? 
Maybe this hole is where the control panel goes. Well, that's the only one way to find out. In you go. Dude, you did it. Everything looks alright. But what do we do now? Why don't you press the button next to it? The orange one? Yes. Alright, I'll do that. Pushing. Sweet! All sorts of lights are lighting up on this thing. And... Oh! Yes, I think I just heard something turn on. Oh? What's that? What's happened? Junpei, look! The conveyor belt's moving! The conveyor belt? Well, I guess it's done moving now. There's still a bunch of coal on the belt, though. It looks like a bunch of it got dumped off the end of the belt into that wooden box where we found the control panel. Coal. Coal, huh? And we have a box of coal. What the hell are we gonna do with this? Hmm. Can we throw it in here? This is where you put coal in the furnace? That's right. I had a look at it earlier, but it's rusted shut, I'm afraid. Perhaps you should check the other side. Okay. Check the other side. Hey! There's a hole that'll let us put coal into the furnace. Maybe if we can get some coal in there and set it on fire. Okay, let's do it. We're gonna start the engines back up. Alright, that's the last of it. No coal left in the wooden box. And nothing. Great. Well, I guess I should have expected that. Why would just throwing coal into a cold furnace do anything? Ah, well, man can dream. Junpei, explain it to me again. You're planning to stoke the furnace with coal, which will heat the water stored up there and make steam, which will then drive something else. Am I correct? In other words, you want to generate enough pressure with the steam to power the turbine. And drive the steam engine, right? Yeah, I, I guess that's the gist of it. Hmm. Well, in that case, this isn't enough coal. The furnace is enormous! We're gonna need a whole hell of a lot of coal more than this. Very well, then. If the three of us work together, then we should manage to fill it much faster. I... I want to help, too. Man, I totally didn't even see her walk up. Are... are you feeling up to that? Yes. Yeah, right. You look like you're one stiff breeze away from falling over, June. I think you better rest some more, alright? But... Uh, but... No arguing. You need your rest. So, just stay there. We'll handle this. Okay. I understand. Alright, time for some manly work. Let's get this coal into those furnaces. Man, this is a lot of work. Alright, I think this should be sufficient. Alright, now we just gotta light it. Junpei, hand me your matches. What makes you think I have matches? I see. Then how are we gonna light it? Perhaps there's a, v a device nearby that will allow us to remotely ignite the coal. Let's take a look, shall we? Some sort of ignition device, huh? Oh hey, we found a lever earlier that didn't do anything. We gotta go try that again. Here goes nothing. Is this... I think it might be. It probably is. I think this is how we must ignite the furnace. And that means if we move that thing down... Alright, let's do it. Here we go. Hey, Junpei, Ace, look at this! There's big gears turning under the boiler here. Hmm? The gears. They're spinning. What the hell are you guys waiting for? I'll start looking! They seem to have stopped. Whoa. Gold disc. It's the same on both sides. Huh. Hmm. Sort of a trefoil, triple circle shake shape there. And another one. Bronze disc. It looks... similar. How much you want to bet there's going to be a silver disc? Look at 
that on the top. So it was gold, bronze, silver. Okay, we'll see if that matters. Huh. What the hell do we do with these? I think we can go further up the stairs, can't we? Some more stairs? Yeah, let's try. This is the exit door. Wait, maybe I missed something. Hey, Junpei, what are you doing? It's hotter than hell in there! Did you already forget that we lit the furnace? Uh, yes. You're right. Oh, well, can't go that way then. Hmm. Back down, I guess. Whoop! One of the great metal ribs of the ship. Ah, oh, yeah, let's, uh... Let's head back this way. I think there's... Yeah, there's another pair of stairs over here. Okay. Hey, look at this! It looks like this thing unlocks the door. There's a depression here that looks like the outline of three circles laid on top of each other in a triangle. Maybe... Maybe if we put those three discs we found into this thing. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's stick them in. Huh? That's odd. Nothing's happening. Maybe you're, I don't know, putting them in the wrong places? Perhaps you have them facing the wrong directions. Perhaps you should rotate the discs to make some of the lines connect to one another. Hmm. Well, no harm in trying. Instructions. They just told me how to do this, man. When the white arrow is touched, the discs are switched. Please note, when the discs are switched, the angles for the discs are reset because we couldn't figure out how to code that. All right, so it looks like... I'm seeing a red circle here. Maybe we can... No? That doesn't quite work. They're probably in the wrong places here. Let's... let's see, which one has the most of the circle? Silver. So let's put that on top so we can see all of it. I'm gonna put it in the middle-ish. Probably there, I guess. Is this gonna line up? That that kind of looks like it lines up. Not really. No, these are probably wrong. Let's switch these. No, nope, that doesn't work at all. Hmm. So it looks like. Let's see how much red is on each of these. So it looks like there's a lot here, and it's sort of cutting off on the orange, and it's sort of in the middle on the bronze. So is one of these more in the center than the others? I guess maybe we should put the one with the most on the bottom instead. That looks much more like it. Yeah. There we go. The red lines on these discs. I think maybe I can make a star polygon with these. 